Uh, you were wondering where the cat was? She's here. <laughs> um, okay, I'm. We are finishing now. Uh, Andy, I hope the the flag is fine now. It, it's a bit difficult if you don't have the proper um, stick to put it. And I'm going to share. So yes, we are finishing. It has been a hell of a week. Uh, come hell or high water, but we are here. And um, this was Malena's conference. This was her dream. We were just following her and I think it went quite well, even with the pandemic, with all the uh, issues of having an online conference. Um, let me do something else here. So I'm going to run through a few facts about this conference. The first thing is I, I heard, um, I have read in some social networks, in some uh, channels, Oh, if this is a false conference, uh, why is it not free? Why is it? Why do I have to pay? Blah blah blah. Well, this is this is not a conference organized by um, a single company or a group of companies to sell something. This is a conference made by volunteers, by the community for the community. This is the Geo Conference the flagship conference of geospatial in the world, and it's made with uh, volunteers. It's true. We had to hire a couple of persons, like uh, a lawyer, to um, decide what to do with uh, the venue we signed in February 2020, because we had to rescind that contract. And of course, when we signed that, we didn't sign a um, pandemic clause. What happened if there was going to be a pandemic? We didn't thought about that. But the work, all the work you have uh, seen here is done by volunteers. Thank you, Geolibres. Thank you, Osgeo. And also the software stack is 90% and 99% FOSS. There is one small piece that we couldn't find a proper uh, FOSS um, uh, substitute for that. But um, believe me, that's, that's going to change in the future. All everything, all the software stack the attendees have used is FOSS. So if you want to create your own conference, you can do it just by hosting yourself and contributing to those um, projects. Then you may be wondering uh, how many attendees we had this year because um, the rules changed this year. We don't have travel, but we have other kind of problems. Um, you may be thinking this is easy. Just check how many people have bought a ticket, but that's not as easy as you may think, because some people bought two tickets or even four tickets, one for uh, the uh, general sessions and a different one for each workshop. Then some people um, decided to um, buy a ticket and then they were uh, speakers, so they received a free ticket, so they had to cancel the previous ticket, so it was a mess. Then um, I thought, well, we can just write a script, check how many unique emails we have uh, registered and that's it. But that's also not true because people that bought bundles and some companies just assign the same email to all the tickets, even if it was for indi individuals. Then we start getting uh, questions if um, in some places they had bandwidth issues and they say, can we use one single ticket for 10 people watching the same screen? And I say, well, I'm not going to put the camera on and watch if it's true or not. I mean, if it's one person or if it's 10, just do whatever you want. So it's harder than you think to estimate, but I came up with the minimum uh, number of unique attendees, which is this incredible number. And probably we are close to 2000. So it's amazing. This has been the biggest Phosphor G ever. So woo, applause. <laughs> And uh, it's amazing. 
but this is not the only number I want to share with you. Um, uh, we have had social events 24-7. We had a treasure hunt. There were 40-something Easter eggs hidden, and it has been a complete success. I mean, the people were addicted to the treasure hunt. They were um, discovering things they didn't know, and also there was some kind of competition to see who were going uh, leading the, the board. And also, it was fun to see people just wandering around the map, like as if they were not drunk and of course cats and dogs that you could add to the map so i think the social side was a success and people learned how to dance tango and we had a beautiful icebreaker a beautiful gala dinner it was amazing we had approximately 400 speakers it's difficult to estimate this because then for example in the workshops people were um more people than expected were uh, in delivering the workshops then uh, some people cancelled last time, but approximately 400 speakers, 12,000 uh, mini streamers, probably more, because this number I just took it during the last session, which the count was not complete. Uh, 12 parallel tracks, uh, a lot of talks, a lot of workshops, five keynotes, live codings, panels, the, the woman uh, panel, the, the air spatial panel. We need more treasure hunt. Uh, the business to business meeting was such a successful that uh, I have been told that they are going to meet quarterly now. So if you're interested in business in uh, phosphor G, then uh, just ask around. I don't know exactly where they're going to meet, but ask around because they are going to meet. We discovered we need to do more women in geospatial geo chicas meetings. We need more crazy stuff. <laughs> um, there was well there were a lot of tickets sold as you have seen um but the, the interesting thing is that as um uh, we offered discounted tickets and we offered um a lot of uh, student tickets and tgp tickets which is like um okay um in previous years we paid for uh, tickets and part of the travel of some people to come to the phosphor g in this case we didn't have to pay for the travel but we gave them free tickets and that allowed us to handle a bigger pool of free tickets. We had one session in Spanish. We had two workshops in Spanish. They were full. It was good. I, I recommend um, following Phosphorgis to explore this having something else than English because I think this also helps spread the Phosphorgy um, word everywhere. And talking about spreading it uh, further, I um, we added this year a question about preferred pronouns or your pronouns, depending on how you want to phrase it. Um, well, this is, I hope this is the worst. I hope following phosphor um do the same statistic and that this is the worst uh, statistic because having 72% of members of the same gender or the same gender identity is bad. I'm ashamed to say that I had to add the trolls uh, section here. There were not many, but there were trolls. And well, some people, the invalid ones were the ones that didn't really understood what was the question. So they um, wrote things that clearly uh, meant they were not trolls, they were not pronounce it was they didn't understood the question which is perfectly fine we also made an optional question on uh, attendees this was an optional question when you registered you had this um question when you bought the ticket more or less a third uh, of all the attendees answered this question and if you compare, I don't know if I can go back. Yes, here we have 72% of male. We have now more. And considering only 30% answered and probably those who answered were motivated to um, share their gender identity to help the statistics, this is not a good uh, statistic. I mean, we have a lot of work ahead. We have a lot to... Uh, work on this um, dimension, but it's not the only dimension on diversity we should work on. 
we had attendees for more uh, from more than 80 countries i think it was 84 last time i checked uh the more dark the color it means more people comes from that country but also this is a bit i mean by country i'm not dividing by population i'm not dividing by density of population this is not the best way of showing this. I will probably, I should probably, um, someone suggested I should use this Paul Ramsey's algorithm to just place random points on the map um, based on how many from each country, so it will be better. But even like this, you can see we are missing more than half of Africa. We are missing a lot of Asia. Missing a lot of Asia maybe made sense on this specific, um, instance of a conference because we were working on an American time zone. Um, it was Argentina time zone. So people that were, I mean, thank you so much for the Oceania team that has helped moderating the sessions and has been involved in this conference because I know that they were, they should have been sleeping when we were on the session. So it was a great effort from them. And uh, anyway, we should continue spreading uh, to more countries, to more ethnicities, to more. It's good that even when we were online, we were able to focus on Latin America. And you can see Latin America there shining. Some countries are missing. Well, that's as far as we could go. But well, we should spread more. And now I want to add some people to the stream. I hope you are ready to say thank you. And um, thank you. I don't know if you want to say something. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks everyone thank much for coming. So much. <laughs> they were they were I part hope of the all team. Are welcome. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the, the the core Argentinian team that has been working on this conference. There were many more people, but we have a limit of how many people we can put here. So that's it. Um, I don't want to forget anyone, and I'm probably going to forget people here, but I want to thank the volunteers from the organizing committee. Uh, in the end, we had people from all over the world, but it was focused on Argentina. And I want to thank, because I repeat, this is like a half-time job for a year or even full-time job for the last six months. This is a lot of work to put a, a conference together. It's worth it, but it's all volunteer work. I want to thank the reviewers that helped us create the schedule the academic track that did the peer review of all the articles that were published later, all the session leaders. Thank you so much, because even when um, we had some um, issues at the beginning, understanding how to run the, but believe me, the session leaders have been working since July to get this uh, smooth. And I think it went pretty well. We, we maybe had some sound issues. We had some small minor issues but i mean 350 60 something talks and we only had minor issues that's amazing <laughs> thank you all the speakers thank you the workshop speakers specifically because i know that preparing a workshop is harder than preparing a normal uh, talk and especially on the online version because an online workshop is harder because you don't see if people are getting lost Thank you all the attendees because That's you are the ones that make this great. Thanks to all the sponsors. Thanks to all the partners. Without the sponsors and the partners, we wouldn't have the money to run the infrastructure and to keep us here running. And thank you all the OSGEO community. Thank you. Yes. This resonates more when you do this face to face because mm -hmm. I have no idea if people are clapping or just closing it. <laughs> and of course, um, thank you a lot, Malena, for pushing this. I wish you were able to see this and well, 
I think we have talked a lot about Malena this week. I don't know if any of you want to add something else, but... And... Uh, remember that we don't close uh, in the weekend. We have the code sprint, we have the hackathon. The social gathering and all the maps are going to be, and the chats are going to be open, so you can still contact people. If you miss someone, you can quickly look for them on the uh, meet your peers, and just use it this weekend. It's open, it's paid for. Use it, please, and participate in the gold sprint and the hackathon. The gold sprint is really important, even if you are not a developer. We need hands for doing testing, writing documentation, even if it's just sitting there and just, hey, hurrah, developers, go on and uh, cheer them. That, that's also useful, even if you don't believe it. And I'm going to put you down, so say bye. <laughs> bye. 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 <laughs> Thank you, bye. Uh, what about 2022?